Good afternoon everyone. This is Keith here on location to Carolina Mountain Lights. And uh, just like everybody else, we're starting to take down right now. I've got all my controllers up. But before I started taking up props, I wanted to do something that I'd never done before and do a daytime walkthrough of the display. I made uh, quite a few new uh, props this year that turned out pretty well and I want to show them off a little bit. And, maybe give some of the noobs some ideas for doing their displays. So we'll jump right into it here. Start out with my mini trees. Did eight of these this year. First thing you'll probably notice, it looks a little funny on it, is the base of it. These are uh, half inch EMT pipes. Put three of them on each tree and these serve three purposes. First one, obviously, is to just to work as a stand. Second one is to actually be able to level out the tree. And the third one is to be able to even up all the trees together. As you'll see on this one, it stands up a little high. But the one over there is on a little higher place, a little ridge. So it's driven in the ground quite a bit further. So these allow me to even up all the trees together as well. We get into the tree itself. This was a pretty good design that I came up with this year that worked out well. <clears throat> you see the base of it there. It is a uh, 24 inch in diameter circle cut out of uh, plywood sheathing. Now keep in mind this is a temporary thing for this year. I just had some extra wood and use this. But uh, plywood sheathing is treated. And it does last a while. But the problem you run into is if you'll see those screws there. When you run screws into plywood, plywood is layered. And that layer when layering tends to uh, spread apart when you run screws into it. So while it worked this year, it probably wouldn't be too good for upcoming years. So I'm planning on, I wanted to go with HDPE uh, plastic for the bottom, but I did some pricing on it and uh, pricing these things, it would cost about 40 to 50 bucks for each tree to, do, to use HDPE. And when you've got eight trees, that comes up to close to 400 bucks. So I kind of ruled that out. I have an idea for an uh, inch and a half thick solid pine base for it. Uh, we'll see how that goes next year. Moving on into the middle here. The design I used on this, uh, the very bottom, this piece here, you can only see the edge of it. This is a uh, inch and a half cap and I used uh, the if you know these things well, the, some of them are curved and some of them are flat. You have to use the flat ones to screw it onto the board. This allows you to have an attachment to the board. On top of that is a uh, inch and a half female threaded connector. And I have it uh, with PVC glue on top of the cap. And then the next one is a male threaded connector. And it is uh, PVC glued to the inch and a half pipe. And that allows me to screw into this. It will allow you to adjust the height and also take it apart at the end of the season for storage. I have that same setup on the bottom and on the top. A little harder to see on the top. And as for the top itself, this is a, I believe it's an eight inch circle I cut out of uh, two by 10. So it's an inch and a half thick treated wood. This thing would last quite a few years, even unpainted. 
and you may be able to tell that it is not painted right now. And the reason for that is if you know treated wood, treated wood has to dry out for a few months before you can paint it, or it doesn't take the paint well. So I will have it painted next year. And as far as attaching the Boscoyo strips to the tree, you can see here I use just regular old deck screws. Now I thought about you know getting fancy with it and use the J hooks and all. <clears throat> but if you've priced J hooks lately, we have uh, 40 screws on each of these trees. That's 320. And it would raise the cost up quite a bit if you went with 320 J hooks. So I use the deck screws. Deck screws work fine. The threads on it keep the strips from slipping. And then the lip here keeps them from coming off. And to tighten down the strips, like I said, on this PVC, it's adjustable. So I have an inch or two of play to adjust this in and out to tighten up the strips. So this design worked out pretty well. I've had quite a few people ask me about it, so hopefully that gives you a little better view of it. Moving along here, we'll go over to my fire sticks and spinners. Fire sticks is another new design that I came up with this year. This is two inch PVC pipe. I have three Boscoyo strips on this equally spaced around it. Now because of the way my show is spread out and laid out, I have to build all my props for a 360 degree view. So that's the reason I put three strips going around it like that. But this did look great at night. As you can see, well, something you can't really tell here a lot of people take white PVC because it's the cheapest and they'll take a can of cheap spray paint and uh, paint it. What I did is I took rolls of black duct tape. And if you know duct tape, it's very adhesive. It sticks well. And I did strips from one end to the other until I got it totally covered. A little bit more expensive with the paint, but this thing's going to last forever. Like I say, it's very adhesive on top of the fact that the uh, zip ties will help hold it on as well. As I say, this prop turned out very well. I was very pleased with it. Moving on up to the top, you can see my spinners. Now I've used two of these spinners for a couple of years now and this year I built four more of them. So I have six of them total. They are wireframe spinners with Boscoyo strips zip tied to the wireframes. So if you give me a second here I'll climb up on this ladder and give you a close up look at them. As I said, they're wireframes. I actually drew out the template on my workbench, bent these in shape to the width, same width as the Boscoyo strips. So I can zip tie the strips right onto it, pop pixels right in it. Makes it easy to replace bad pixels, very easy to work with, lightweight. The center there is just uh, circle I cut out a piece of plywood and drilled the appropriate holes in it to mount the wireframe on. Uh, this design turned out very well as well. Like I said, I've used it for a couple of years. You know, with these wireframes, if they get a little bent, you bend them right back in place and you're still good to go. Now moving on over here, you can see my dancing circles built 12 of these this year very simple design 
The circle itself is made out of a uh, half inch PVC conduit. There are 48 inch circles. If you've used this conduit before, you'll know that uh, they have the built on connections to it. So it's basically just uh, cutting two equal length uh, PVC conduit, gluing them together, and all the holes are drilled in it. And then I have each one zip tied in. So it's very secure. Holds its shape very well. I have a 3 8 inch uh, rebar running through the connectors. That's the reason you use uh, equal lengths of PVC conduit. So the connectors are your strong point. So run the uh, rebar through the connectors. And the rebar just drive it into the ground. I made those bushings myself. Keep the cost down. 100 pixels on each one. And when you model this in the X lights, you do the entire model as a circle, and then you can sub model the top half and the bottom half to where you can use the top half as leaping arches also. That's the reason I eliminated my, le my leaping arches from last year and replaced them with these circles because you can get uh, both effects on the circles. Now if you take a look over here, I've already started uh, doing some work on my 2018 show. What I'm doing is taking these 12 dancing circles I'm going to try putting a matrix in the middle of each one of them. Now the kudos goes out to Shannon Wood for uh, introducing me to this plastic hardware cloth. Half inch mesh, pixels pop right in it. Keeps them nice and straight and it's pretty strong. It works out well for a matrix. This is 478 pixels right now. I may do a little bit of adjusting on that. This is one and three quarter inch spacing. I did a couple effects of effects on this uh, with X lights and it looked really well. Like I said, I have 12 of these circles. So if I'm able to get them all done with the matrix, I'll be able to do you know, spinner effects, fans, uh, <clears throat> and with 12 of them, I can actually do letters, you know, spelling out anything up to 12 letters long. So I think I can do some pretty cool things with them. Moving on over here. See here we have my uh, two megapixel, uh, excuse me, mega twig trees. I've done videos on these already, so I'm not going to really get into them now, but they performed flawlessly this year. I was very happy with them. A mega tree, 20 foot tall, got a 42 inch star on top, five levels, 300 pixels. The tree itself is uh, 28 strands of 75 on Boscoyo strips, 3 inch spacing. This thing, I'm adding a little bit to it every year, so eventually I hope to get it up over 40 strips, get a lot better resolution on it. And the design is just your basic uh, mega tree design. But I did beef it up quite a bit. I did have this tree come down twice on me this year. We had uh, one wind storm that came in, over 50 mile an hour winds, that bent inch and a half uh, EMT. We had a second one come in, over 60 mile an hour winds, that again bent inch and a half EMT. No, 
think I went up to two inch EMT then. So this time I went to inch and a half rigid pipe. Rigid meaning it's very thick. This pipe you could take a sledgehammer to it and you can't bend it. So it held up very well this time. Also, in the place of guy wires, I used these adjustable straps all the way around of it. I have four straps on it. I have screw in dog stakes on each one. And being adjustable straps, it allows me to adjust the tension in as needed. pipe itself goes straight into the ground. What I do for mine is I just take a piece of PVC, drive it into the ground, pull it out, knock the plug out, drive it into the ground a little more, pull it out, knock the plug out again, keep doing that till I get the depth on the inside of the pipe that I want. And then I drop something, uh, you know, a piece of wood or something down in the bottom of it to keep the pipe from uh, sinking into the ground and it's worked well for me now for three years and when you get through taking it down at the year you can get a two dollar bag of garden soil at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot fill that hole right back up in no time you'll never know it's there and then the bottom is just a ring of half inch PVC pipe I have 16 stakes steel stakes all the way around that the pvc zip ties to and then the boscoyo strips zip tie to the pvc so that's worked out well for me now and the last thing i wanted to show you is my wall of snowflakes and stars now this prop, I actually consider a failure. Not that it didn't work. It stayed up all year. Snowflakes and stars all worked. But as soon as I move in a little closer, I'll show you why I consider it a failure. But the way it's made, you can see that pipe there, one behind the mega tree. And the one there, each of those are a little over 23 foot tall. Have an eyelet at the top that the rope goes through. And that rope at the top has ropes at one foot increments coming down. And when we get down here to the bottom, you can see I put a pipe through it there for tying the rope off. So what I can do here is I can pull that rope to pull it taut and wrap it around here and it's good to go. The reason I consider it a failure is I was stupid enough to use rope. You can see that sagging rope a rope stretched a whole lot more than I thought it would. That on top of the fact that the eyelets only allow you to pull the rope so tight. So I will use this basic design again next year. However, I'll replace the eyelets with pulleys and replace the rope with a plastic coating guy wire. So it should work a whole lot better then. Well, anyway, that gives you a good look at my display. I'm not going to cover the uh, trimming on the house in the workshop or anything like that because that's pretty standard stuff. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope this helps somebody out. Have a great day, guys.